Which brings us to problem number five. Uh, this is gonna get a little bit more complex. It says using the data for delta H and delta S, calculate delta G for the following reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. Uh, we're given the reaction there. We'll start first with uh, delta H. Uh, again, all of these formulas are provided on your formula chart, but uh, essentially the enthalpy change for reaction, uh, when you're provided with the enthalpy changes, of formation for the reactants and products can be determined by summing together the enthalpies of formation for all of the products and subtracting the sum of all of the enthalpy changes for the reactants. So to solve for delta H here, it's a quick plug and chug. Our product enthalpy changes are going to be one mole times negative 1,676 kilojoules per mole for our aluminum oxide plus two moles times zero kilojoules per mole again because that reactant is an element in its standard state we will subtract from that the sum of our reactant enthalpies of formation, which in this case will be one mole times negative 1,128 kilojoules per mole plus two times zero kilojoules per mole. Again, anytime you've got an uh, element in its standard state, it will have an enthalpy change of zero kilojoules per mole. Note that it's not provided to us in the data table, therefore you've got to watch out and make sure that you recall that information anytime you're doing these types of calculations. But a quick input into our calculator will give us an enthalpy change of negative 548 kilojoules, emphasis on kilojoules, uh, for this reaction. Now, to determine the entropy change, given the entropies uh, provided to us there, uh, we're gonna use a similar equation where the sum of the entropy of the entropy change of the products minus the sum of the entropy change of your reactants uh, will give us our overall entropy change for the reaction. Uh, once again, it's simply a matter of plugging in the numbers provided to us here. And if we do that, we will get uh, one mole times 51 joules per mole Kelvin plus two moles times 24 joules per mole Kelvin. Again, notice the difference here when you're calculating enthalpy changes versus entropy changes. For elements, uh, when you're doing enthalpy changes, that value is zero kilojoules per mole. But entropy changes, they will always have a value that is greater than zero. So when you're working with entropy or delta S, just think, oh, shit. Uh, I gotta watch out for a couple of things here. One, my elements are gonna have uh, some positive value greater than zero, and my units are in joules uh, instead of kilojoules. So just some things to watch out for when you're working with entropy. Um, but time back in, we're gonna subtract from that the sum of our entropy changes for our reactants, which will be one mole times 81 joules per mole Kelvin plus two moles times 28 joules per mole Kelvin. Again, a great example here of an element um, that you may easily confuse and put in a zero, uh, which you would do in an enthalpy calculation or Gibbs free energy calculation. Uh, but then at this point, it's simply a quick matter of plugging it into our calculators to solve and you should get an entropy change of, of negative 38 joules per Kelvin. So we've done a lot of work here. We've solved for the enthalpy change. We solved for the entropy change. Now we need to solve for the Gibbs free energy change, uh, which relates these two variables, delta H and delta S, using the following formula. 
Um, the tricky part here is you've got to recognize that your enthalpy change is in kilojoules, but your entropy change is in joules. So before you uh, perform this calculation, you need to make sure that you change them both to the same unit. Um, I'm going to change my joules unit to kilojoules, so we're going to end up with negative 548 kilojoules minus my temperature change, or my temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin times my entropy change in kilojoules, which would be negative 0 0.038 joules per Kelvin. Sorry, kilojoules per Kelvin. Uh, which means that my Gibbs free energy change for this uh, equation or this reaction is going to be negative 537 kilojoules or this will be thermodynamically favored because our Gibbs free energy change is negative. All right, question number six says, given the values of delta G that you calculated in problem number five, calculate K for the fallen reaction, again at 25 degrees Celsius. So um, as you think back to the problem we just solved, our delta G value we calculated was negative 537 kilojoules. Um, we want to know now our uh, equilibrium constant K, so we're sort of going to tie back in uh, some equilibrium uh, stuff. Uh, from earlier units um, and if you uh, look at your formula chart the uh, Gibbs free energy change is uh, related to your equilibrium constant using the final the following formula where negative RT times the natural log of your equilibrium constant is equal to your Gibbs free energy change this equation can be rearranged to solve for the equilibrium constant, and I highly encourage you to commit this to your memory, um, which is equal to e to the power of your negative delta G over RT. This, if you're mathematically inclined, this makes a lot of sense to you. If not, I encourage you just to memorize this, uh, which has solve this formula for the equilibrium constant K. At this point then, it's just a matter of plugging and chugging, uh, where our negative Gibbs free energy change will be positive 537 kilojoules, divided by our constant R, which is gonna be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times our temperature 298K. Now, I've got a problem, and these are problems that you're gonna run into on the free response, that you're gonna run into on maybe the multiple choice, uh, where you've gotta be really, really very careful with your units. As you look at trying to solve this, we've got kilojoules here for our Gibbs free energy, yet the constant R is given to us in joules. Uh, so you've gotta make sure that you make that change before you solve. So I'm gonna rewrite this as E to the, let's do 5.37 times 10 to the five joules. Uh, do it like this divided by your 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times 298 Kelvin. So just watch out for that uh, difference in unit. It's gonna cause you a problem uh, and one that you could easily answer uh, if you are carefully watching your units. Uh, when you solve this then or plug it into your calculator, you're gonna end up with uh, the equilibrium constant is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the 94th power, uh, which is much, much greater than one. So K is much, much greater than one. Uh, and therefore that implies that this is very thermodynamically favored. Favored, in other words, we're definitely going to uh, favor the formation of our products here. All right, and then our last uh, problem for the day is going to ask us to think a little bit about 
Again, just in general, the relationships between delta H, delta S, and T, um, and determine whether or not we've got something that's thermodynamically favored or non-thermodynamically favored. Uh, again, the equation that relates all of these things and essentially our thermodynamic favorability, or delta G, is um, delta H minus T delta S. Now, I'll do the first one for you here, uh, but if we plug these values in, again, you've got to be careful recognizing that enthalpy changes are in kilojoules and entropy changes are in joules uh, per mole Kelvin. Um, so just be on the lookout. You've got to change those, um, either one or the other, to make sure you've got the same units. Uh, but if you plug them into your first uh, equation here, you should get a positive one kilojoule uh, value for your Gibbs free energy change, um, which implies that this is not thermodynamically favored. Whoa. Um, if you plug it into uh, part B here, you get a negative 5 kilojoule for your Gibbs free energy change, which is thermodynamically favored. Uh, part C here, we get positive 85 kilojoules, not thermodynamically favored. Part D here, we get negative 1 kilojoule, so yes, thermodynamically favored. And then the last one here, we get negative 85 kilojoules. Uh, again, very much thermodynamically favored. So keep that in mind. This is an important equation to keep in the back of your mind. It's on your formula chart, which relates delta H and delta S, which will ultimately tell us whether or not the reaction will be thermodynamically favored or not.